of when and where. And that's where we pass the story on with CBC's Paul Hunter. It was the Canadarm 20 years ago that launched the satellite. Discovery Houston, looks like a great release, and step one. The Upper Atmosphere Research Satellite, orbiting happily since 1991. But, as we all know, goes up, must come down. And sure enough, now it is coming down. Look the sky! The sky is falling! The sky is not the sky, of course, but the satellite, intentionally emptied of fuel. It's now, with the help of gravity, sinking fast. It's expected to come hurtling down in giant flaming chunks later this week. Where? Somewhere between these lines. The bad news? That's where most people live. The good news? There's way more water and empty land than people. Usually, space junk fully burns up on the way down, like this Russian space station in 2001. But then there was Skylab in 79, chunks of it hit Australia. And in 78, a Russian spy satellite slammed into the Northwest Territories. No one was hurt then, but what about now? Says NASA, the odds of this one hitting someone? About 1 in 3,200, or roughly the same as that of a pro golfer getting a hole in one, which, by the way, Tom Watson did just two months ago. So this week, all eyes, including those of Toronto space enthusiast Ted Motson, are skyward. His hope? A light show that crash lands far from everyone. The people who are lucky enough to see it uh, will just see it as uh, a comet-like trail of bright objects. In Washington, they likewise hope for the best, that if it crashes, it's... Where no people are? But if it's coming straight down, <laughs> run. <laughs> so come Friday or Saturday or Thursday, keep your eyes up there or there or there because you never know. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Washington. <laughs> you sure don't. Listen, a story like that means there's only one person who can help us now, and he's right here, joining us from Victoria, Bob McDonald, the National Science Correspondent. Now, look, why can't they be more precise about where this is going to fall? Well, because there are a number of reasons. It has to do with the satellite's orbit, the satellite shape, and the Earth's atmosphere. So the orbit that's, that it's on, as Paul said, is on an angle like this. It goes around the Earth like this, but as it does that, the Earth is turning underneath it. So every time it passes over, it passes over a different part of the ground, so they can't tell where it's going to come down. But the Earth is mostly water. They're hoping that's what it'll hit. Second, the atmosphere of the Earth is affected by our sun, and right now the sun's very active, it's in its solar max, and that causes the atmosphere to actually stick up a little bit more, which will grab the satellite sooner, but that changes from day to day. They can't predict that. And finally, the satellite itself, as you said, it's like a school bus. It's got an odd shape, and it's tumbling end over end, so you don't know how that's going to behave in the atmosphere. It's not like the space shuttle. It's all nice and smooth, and you can fly it down. It's just tumbling, and it's sort of like a stone skipping across water. You never know when it's going to stop skipping and then drop down. So that's why it's unpredictable. They won't know until the last hour where it's actually going to come down, so we just have to wait. All right, quickly, how much space junk is there up there? There's a lot. I have a graphic here that shows just some of it. There are a, about 20,000 pieces of junk in space bigger than your fist, and some of them are the size of cars. They're all being watched, but it's an ongoing issue, and more and more satellites are going up, and there's actually a call for international action to do something about it, so that countries, including Canada, who put satellites up, will take the responsibility to get rid of them in a safe way so that junk is not falling out of the sky. All right, got to leave it there, Bob. Let Bob get some air for that uh, Earth balloon, right? Let's start okay, okay, I'll pump it up a little bit here. How's that? <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Bob okay. McDonald and Victoria tonight. Well, tonight's the night Winnipeg has been waiting for... Well, that was a funny story. I like the way these guys came across it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I saw something. I saw a post of somebody who commented on that particular um, aspect of it. And uh, he said, why don't they... Why don't they... Um, what was it again? Why don't they, yeah, why don't they keep, make sure that the satellite has a little bit of fuel left, which are now apparently on this particular uh, uh, part of the news there, we, there was fuel. They actually emptied it. Why don't they use that little bit of fuel that it should have as an emergency fuel and send it on a trajectory to the sun where it will disintegrate without any harm? 
And they could do that with about 15,000 of those of that space just for the last space junk that's out there. Anyway, it's just a thought. So anyway, it's coming to you. Um, <coughs> this is Simon Blue, <laughs> in case you didn't know. <laughs> and I'm uh, at the command center, and it's evening, 10.30 at night, and I don't know why I'm still doing this, but I'm having fun. And I wanted to... Uh, wanted to go over that because that, that's pretty cool news. Uh, it's good that it, to keep in track on it. There's actually a, um, a satellite tracking, um, a sat tracker online that you could uh, click and go and see the UARS satellite and just follow it. Um, meanwhile, there's some pretty good stories on CBC. So, you know, if you're watching the news, good for you, man. There's, uh, there's some pretty good stuff going on. Uh, I'm really, I'm really, I'm not happy about this, uh, tough and crime sweep bill that is going to be coming to law becoming law next year it's just uh it's like a smaller model of of what the u.s uh you know patriotic act and uh, terrorist act and whatever other act it's all it's all aimed at at at, uh, at uh, making us ready for uh, or ready to get into this police state um, uh, mode, you know, for the next couple of years. And it has to do also, you know, last week they had also the, uh, uh, you know, Harper went to visit the border and they talked about perimeters and stuff and how they're going to, you know, work work the differences and to make it easier for, uh, you know, everyone. Of course, making it easier for them, right? Really, that's about the North American Union agreement, uh, where they're going to sort of remove the borders between um, Canada, the states, and Mexico, and bring in the Amero, uh, which will be one new currency. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, it sounds fun. Eh? It sounds like, oh, great, I can just go from here to Mexico without being stopped. That's not true. And secondly, what that's going to do is give authority to these people uh, to rewrite the constitutions of those countries into and so <laughs> seeing that <laughs> the direction seems to be going one particular way <laughs> it's almost easy to understand that by rewriting these constitutions which have plenty of freedoms uh, and human rights and all that stuff that are involved in there, you know, I don't know, I mean, it, it's, it doesn't take a scientist or, uh, you know, it doesn't take a very smart person to understand that, I think, you know, basically what they're saying is we're going to rewrite this so that everything fits with this magnificent new world that everybody's going to be living in happily enslaved <laughs> that's right so in the meantime hey listen got a hundred days so <laughs> let's have some fun man okay i'll leave you on that one and uh see if i can get it posted up uh, i'm a little bit tired but you know i'll do it i'll do it for you because i love you man because i love you <laughs> good night oh and vince thanks for the comment that was pretty cool i just saw it before uh nam you know about the dream stuff uh, I'm sorry but you know and you're gonna have to stop popping into my dreams the way you do okay okay I mean I don't really mind it all that much but uh, once a month you know I don't and uh, for the rest of you out there have a good night <laughs> peace out chill uh, you know have fun make babies do what you got to do man but believe in being bye Woo. Oh, that was nice. I just missed something really cool. Oh, well.